Hey guys, Coach Sass here, Sweet Spot Pitching. How are you? Uh, as you can see, I have no glove, so it is time to go to school. We are going to learn today. Um, and today's topic is one of my favorites to talk about. And, and it's, it's essentially, and I think it's super vital in the world that we live in today. And, and to me, it is what, what is good pitching, right? What entails good pitching? What, how do we get there? Um, and, and ironically for me, my entire pitching philosophy for the last probably 20 years was shaped by one question from one reporter, right? And I remember I was sitting in the dugout getting interviewed and uh, we were having just casual conversation. And I remember he asked me, he said, Scott, who, who, was, who was the one guy that you struggled to get out? Who was the guy that you, you just, he had your number? And I remember thinking about it pretty diligently and it occurred to me, I know, I know who it, I know who it is. I'm not giving him that credibility. I, I'm aware of who he is. And I promise you, if he didn't hit a bomb, he, he hit it off the damn wall. So uh, it was, it was always, I, I couldn't get him out. Let's just put it that way. I mean, my best option was probably to walk him if I'm being honest. So, and then I started thinking about why. Why couldn't I get him out? And then it occurred to me that I couldn't get him off balance. I could never get him to a place where he was uncomfortable. I, I was always the one playing catch up. And then that got me to think, okay, well, I couldn't get him off balance. So, so what, is, what is good hitting, right? What, what constitutes good hitting? Ask any big leaguer, any great hitter any hitter, the hitting is all about balance and timing, right? Being, being balanced and being on time, right? Sure. There's pitch identification and things, but, but for, for the purposes of this conversation, balance and timing. So what is good pitching? This is, this literally happened in the dugout and it occurred to me, good pitching is just messing that up. That that's all it is. It's literally just messing up their balance or their timing. That's good pitching. So the world that we live in, and this, this is what I think is so important. Like I create hyper athletes in my program. Like I want you to throw 96. I want you to throw 99, right? I want you to have the proper mechanical structure to support that kind of velocity. Um, because this, this world that we're in right now, especially at the major league level, it's velocity, velocity. Listen, listen, let me tell you about velocity, especially from a guy who went from 96, 98 to post-surgery, 91, 93. It's like, I, I had velocity stripped from me. Let me tell you what velocity is and does, right? What it does, velocity, is it allows you to make more mistakes and get away with them. That's it. That's it. You, I mean, watch a big league game. Guys are throwing 99 and getting absolutely pissed on all the time. Doubles in the gap. Bow, bow. Because why? Because everything's hard, hard, hard. So hard slider, hard fastball. It, it, I sit there and, and I chuckle to myself that these guys are 99 with a 91 mile an hour slider, but they don't know why they can't get anyone out. Well, because you're, you're not getting anyone off balance or off time, right? So velocity means that I can get away center cut at 96 with a little bit of run and I might get fouled off or be a swing and a miss. Whereas at 91, it's probably going to be a doubler in the seats, right? And I want you guys to throw as absolute hard and as athletically as you can with, with the right mechanics. But, but I also want you to understand velocity is not king. It's just not. I, mean, I know that's the world we're living in and everyone's grunting and throw it. Good, good for you. But, but if you want to know how to pitch, if you want to know how to succeed, you're going to have to know what it means to get somebody off balance, right? We're going to have to get their timing or their balance off. We're going to have to change their eyesight, meaning go up and down. There has been a lot more of that because of, and, and thank you hitters for this ridiculous straight up swing, which is why strikeouts are through the roof, but neither here nor there. There has been a lot of talk of elevating in the zone. Right. And I used to talk to my guys about that all the time, about working down, working up, right? Down and up, right? Changing that eye level in and out. 
talk about that, right? So you got north and south, you've got east and west. But what people don't talk about and what I've learned in my career and what made the college team that I coached one of the top five in the nation for two years in a row was that we talked about soft and hard, right? So that's the ability to know when to throttle up, but when to take some off, to understand that it's okay. To, if you can throw your curveball 78 miles an hour and that's max effort and you're snapping it off, it's okay to flip it up there at 67. So, and I understand because trust me, I was that guy. Like I came up and everything was harder, harder, harder. Like it, but looking back, what I realized is I was doing that out of fear. It was, it was fear-based. It was a hundred percent because I was afraid if I took something off, that that would be the pitch that got destroyed. But what I'm asking you guys to start understanding from a concept standpoint is that it's, it's okay, right? If you've been going hard at somebody, right? With max effort fastball, max effort fastball, it's okay to take something off. It's okay to slow it down because what you're going to get is you're going to get that hitter out on his front foot, off balance. So what we're talking about is it, at the elevated levels, they call it adding and subtracting, right? From each pitch that you have. So if you've got a four seam fastball and that thing tops out at 91, we got to know how to throw that thing at 86 and be okay with that and understand when that occurs. But ne not everything that we do has to be max effort all the time. Because from my experience, when we go harder, usually we go wronger. <laughs> and I know that's not a word, but it, it, goes, it goes in a bad direction, right? So sometimes the better play is to throttle back. Not always put the pedal to the metal and try to throw it as hard as we can. So good pitching is the understanding that I don't have to throw max effort on every pitch. That, that all I'm trying to do is get this guy off balance. Get this guy to swing at a pitch that I want him to swing at in a count that I like. And understand, I just went hard twice that I can flip my breaking ball up there. And like I said, at 78 is max effort. 67, 69 is going to be just fine. Because I'm going to get him out on the front foot. And, and that's why you see so many guys that understand this concept that can flip a first pitch breaking ball in there knowing this guy's sitting dead red. And now guess what I just did? I just took the count over. Now it's 0-1 because I was able just to flip a ball in there nice and easy and know that there's no chance he's sitting back on 66 or 68 when, when you're an 80 guy. So we've got to start understanding those concepts. But to me, that shaped my entire concept of what it means to pitch well is to understand how to get hitters off balance. If you guys have any questions about that or comments, thoughts, hit me up. Make sure we subscribe. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Um, thank you guys for being here. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Like I said, if you got questions, let me know. We'll see you at the next one.